Hey there, welcome back to moneygal.ca. All right, so I'm going to show you how to use Excel to budget for when your income is irregular, meaning that it doesn't come in in regular increments. I'm going to build on other videos I've already done, so it would be very handy for you to go back and watch those. I don't have enough time in these videos to repeat all of the stuff I've already shown you. So in the Excel series, in video number one, we built this blank budget. And in video number two, we populated the blank budget. In video number three, I showed you how to build the table. Actually, I think in tables in videos number three and four, I showed you how to build this table for tracking your money on a daily basis and managing your budget. And in video number six, I simplified that process by adding this category called already spent, where I rolled up all of your regular spending and regular bills into one category to make budgeting simpler. All right, so we're going to build onto those uh, concepts and basically how we're going to deal with money that doesn't come in in regular increments is this. When you built a regular budget, you assume that your pay comes in in 26 neat, tidy, little, regular bundles, and you budget accordingly, meaning that each time you receive pay, it allots 126th of your yearly budget to each category. But that's not going to work if your pay comes in less regularly. So the example that I'm going to use is my husband's example because he's a volunteer firefighter, and he does get paid for that, but the city only pays him twice a year. So this wouldn't work necessarily for that because... In our regular budget, it's assuming that that pay comes in. I can budget for that pay, but it assumes that it comes in in 24 regular increments when it doesn't. It only comes in two chunks. So if during the year I was assuming that 126 of his fire pay was coming in each week, then this budget would actually be pretty inaccurate because I'd be spending money that actually is not in my bank account yet. So how we're going to account for that is we're going to, instead of um, doing a like an even slice of our income, what we're going to do is we're going to calculate the percentage of our income that's uh, represented by each category. And as money comes in, we're only going to lot that percentage of the money that came in. And that'll be a more accurate way of budgeting for this. All right. So in order to make that happen, we have to go to our budget tab and we have to add a column. So in order to add a column, I hover till I get this arrow pointing down. I right click and I say insert. The formula for a percentage is going to be equals the total budget for the year slash the total money that came in in the year. And in order to make sure that when I copy that formula down to the next cell in the next cell, I don't want the computer to reference the next cell in the next cell down over here. I want to always reference this one particular cell. So how you handle that is you click inside your formula and you add a dollar sign in front of the number 12 in this case. I always want it to reference cell B12, so enter. I want to see this number as a percentage, so if I select again the entire column and I click here to show it that I want to see a percentage. And then you can just click and drag the formula down to each of the categories. I lost a bit of formatting here, so to get that back I can simply choose a cell and go up here and choose the borders that I want to appear in that cell. Alright, that's all that needs to happen here. Now we're going to go back to this uh, table where we're tracking our budget and we're tracking our money as it comes in each time. Now, this is the column that's the problem, right? Because this is the one that's calculating neat, tidy little bundles. And instead, I want to calculate a percentage. So instead of calling it per pay, I'm actually going to call it available to date. And instead of this formula, the new formula is going to be equals the total that's come in so far times the percentage for that category minus the total I've spent so far. So if I go back to this one now, the total I've spent so far is going to be what's in, in this cell, C3. So I'm going to just type in C3. So you can see in my formula, I've got the total that come in so far, okay, times the percentage allotted by the budget minus whatever I've spent so far in that category. And again, I need to tweak this budget with a dollar sign before the one because I want to make sure each time that it's for, that it's referring to this cell A1 where I've entered the money that's come in. Enter. Okay, and now I can click and drag that formula down. And as I spend money, okay, you'll see what happens in each of these cells here. This cell 
which shows me the total in my bank account. If I spent $50 today before I told it that anything came in, it's going to show me that I'm in deficit. That's really important for how we use this table, okay? Basically, what's going to happen is as we get a paycheck, let's say I got paid $500 today, I enter it up here, and it's going to break the that money down by percentage into each category, okay? And as you spend the money, it's going to show you a running total. So as you spend the money, you're simultaneously going to be watching what's available to date in each category. You're also going to watch what's left for the year in each category. I'll explain that in a second. And you're, the most important cell you're watching, though, is this one here. That shows you the amount left in your bank account. And you want to make absolutely sure that you don't run into a deficit here, that you don't go into your overdraft. Okay, what's going to happen is that as... Let's say using that firefighter example again, where you're only paid twice a year for that work. In the six months before that check comes, what might happen is you might start to run a small deficit in some of these categories, like gas and food or phone bills. I mean, these are things that as the bills come in, you have to pay them. You don't really have a choice. So you might start to run a small deficit here. But as long as you're not in your overdraft, it means that there's money building up in some of these other categories. Um, some of these variable categories that you have a choice on. So basically what's going to happen is that you're going to decide, okay, this is not the week for buying clothes because I can clearly see that I'm going to go into my overdraft if I do that. And you don't really have to sweat it if you run a small overdraft in some of these other categories where you couldn't help it because what's going to happen is that twice a year when you get that big check, let's say $2,500 comes in all of a sudden, what's going to happen is your categories are going to get padded for that six months coming. And the more often that happens, the more often and the longer you've been using this, the more you won't have to worry about those little um, discrepancies happening, okay? Um, so that's it. You're gonna use this table to watch all of this stuff simultaneously. And because you're doing it as a percentage, it shouldn't matter that your money's coming in in uh, weird little increments. If you have any questions, feel free to go to my website and drop me an email. Thanks, we'll talk to you later.